smog in the smog of the media, the laws, false narratives of gods that came up against the odds. We're not just nigga rappers with the bars. Welcome, everybody. Let's hear it for Dion Decibels, our DJ. Welcome to YBCA and the Poetic Address to the Nation 2017, produced in collaboration with the U.S. Department of Arts and Culture. First, I'd like to welcome you to YBCA through the voice of our great CEO, Ms. Deborah Cullinan. Hello. Uh oh. Oh. Let's just keep trying until we get this thing right, okay? Hello. Very, very good. My name is Deborah, and I am the director here at Yerba Buena Center for the Arts, and I am just so very thrilled to have you all here today and to be with, here with the United States Department of Arts and Culture. Now, um, we, I want to also welcome the many people who are participating in viewing parties, watching on Free Speech TV and YBCA's Facebook Live. So we are here in the theater, people across the country are with us, and we all just need to make our voices heard. Am I right? Right. So um, this is exactly what this organization should be doing. YBCA, our mission is to generate culture that moves people, because it is cultural shift a shift in the, what, we, what we believe in and what we will stand for as a people that will achieve lasting change. And that is what we think arts organizations of all shapes and sizes across this country should be orienting their resources toward today. Now, how do we do that? This is how we do it. Every year at the beginning of our fiscal year, we name uh, the YBCA 100. This is the list of the people who are most inspiring to us as an institution. They are, the, these are creative change makers of all kinds, and I'm very happy that so many of them are here with us today. Uh, yeah, let's do that. As much of that as you want to do. Um, we then gather as many of those people together as we can in, uh, at the YBCA 100 Summit. We asked the list makers to join us. We had about 400 stakeholders with us just a few days before the 2016 election. Uh, and we asked those list makers to share with us, what are the questions that are keeping you up at night? What are the things that are driving your work? And our job is to come out of that day with three questions. Those three questions then shape the work of the institution. Out of the 2015 summit, and you're gonna be hearing from seeing and enjoying a lot of the fellows that uh, gather around these questions, we had question, can we design freedom? what does equity look like, and why citizenship? And we are about to roll out the announcement of the questions that came out of the 2016 summit, which I'm sure you can understand, took us just a little longer. We had to think on that a little bit. Um, and from there, there are five things that we do as an institution in order to put our best selves towards those questions. The first most important thing we do is we make and share art, all kinds of art across the disciplines. Second thing we do is inquiry, and we do that in the form of fellowship, uh, gathering people around those questions that are nuanced that will lead us beyond this sort of atomizing, binary public debate into real dialogue so we can make change as a community. We then do inc incubation. We are a cultural incubator. So we're looking for the best ideas, whether they're art ideas, policy ideas, startup ideas, that we can support as an institution that will change the world. We also do convening, large scale convening, like the one we're doing today, international convenings, community gatherings. We believe in our power as a convening organization. And we also do civic coalition. Uh, radical, large-scale, cross-sector coalition. These are the kinds of things, these five things, that we are the things that we think art centers of all kinds should be putting together in order to shift culture, and we hope you believe that too. So we are very, very glad to be here. Go ahead. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Um, we are so glad to be here uh, with the United States Department of Arts and Culture. This is about the voices of the people. And here uh, in our theater, you see uh, words that were generated out of story circles that we hosted here at YBCA with Radar and with our youth fellows. Throughout the day, you're going to be experiencing a number of YBCA fellows, uh, youth fellows, our senior fellow, um, and also a number of the fellows in our Freedom and citizen co co uh, Citizenship cohort. We've also got stuff outside. We've got 100 days of action out there. Um, we've got a number of different things happening, so take it in, be part of it, and let's all put our voices together as loudly as we can while I introduce to you our MC, one of my favorite people on the planet, one of the most creative women in the world, Shanaka Hodge.
Welcome. 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 My name is Chinaka Hodge, and I am a senior fellow here at Yerba Buena Center for the Arts. I'm really excited to welcome you, the people, to our poetic address to the nation. Give it up for yourselves just off top. As Deborah mentioned, we had a bunch of uh, YBCA's best and um, hardest working stakeholders invited to this table. Uh, we we settled out with some fellows, some youth fellows, and, and some of the people in our midst. We also are really pleased to present the voices of people from all over the nation through the work that USDAC does with their story circles, through some of the poets who couldn't be here in flesh but will be presenting via video or in their sonnets. We really want to reflect the America that looks like this room, the America that looks like the America we see in our heads, right? So I, I, there was a speech that happened a while ago from some dude who shall not be named. You heard of him? He's weird looking. He's never really floated anything. He's never held public office, whatever. Um, he did a speech, and that's one set of ideas and one set of ideals. But what, what, what we believe here at Yerba Buena Center for the Arts, what we believe with USDAC is that we can make better. We can address ourselves better. We can name ourselves, speak for ourselves. So that's what today is about. You have a piece in this. There's hella poets backstage. They're nervous. You have to... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was good. The front of the room caught on really quickly. But, it, but if you're feeling a poem in the back of the room, in the middle of the poem, and you're like, ooh, I really want to say something, say it. Be like, yeah, I feel that. Hallelujah. Amen. L'chaim. Whatever it is, whatever it is that floats your boat, feel free to respond back to that in the poem. Now is the time to turn down your cell phones. Tweet about us and then turn down your cell phones. Now is the time to note where your exits are. We will have no intermission. You are here for this ride with us. We encourage you to add your voice into this room. We say hello to the folks on live stream. Hello, hello, Facebook Live. Hello, our live stream folks. There's people who had story circles who are tuning in. There are people who just want to see parties all over the country. So we're about a couple hundred people in this room, um, but we're thousands, if not millions, along, all, around the world. So one big collective yell for everybody all together just to see if we could do it. One more big, loud, loud collective yell for our ASL interpreters over here. One last yell for, that, for my DJ, Dion Decimal. We're gonna do this thing in three sections. The first will be original poems by original poets. The second will be poets reading sonnets that were sourced from the story circles. We'll tell you more about that. The third section will be more original poets reading original poems. Let me tell you about the, the folks in the first section. We have Young Gifted and Black and Oakland-based performance ensemble. Yes. Uh, under direction of Lee Davis and Hadari Davis with cons consultation from Candice. Uh, we have Bob Holdman, the founder and artistic director of Bowie Poetry Club from New York City. If you don't know who he is, he's a really big deal. We have uh, Hadil Ramadan, who was the BNV, yeah, international teen poetry slam champion in 2010. We have Luis Rodriguez, who is the poet laureate of Los Angeles and the author of Always Running. We have Cam Awkward, a CC fellow, Kaveh Kanem fellow, and the editor-in-chief at Muzzle Magazine. And we have one of my favorite humans on the earth, one of our youth fellows, Nautica Williams. So please give it up for the first section of the show. Get hype, get hype, get hype, get hype! These are songs written for black children to sing elegies to a forgotten past. These, These are, are poems. poems written in honor of those warriors, freedom fighters, artists, ancestors determined to put in the minds and mouths and hearts and souls of our people. These, These words, words are mantras. The late night meditation meant to be dreamed, memorized, recited, and performed. These, These are, are lessons. lessons meant to be taught in real time. The making of heroes requires repetition. The making of heroes requires consistency, requires reciprocity. Culture. Culture. To save ourselves, we must save them. You must save us, and we must save you. Requires awareness. Acceptance. Actual application of what we know is right. Out of the mouths of babies. 
You gotta do better. We must expect better for you. For ourselves, we gotta become the wretched of the earth. The forgotten victims of our own uneducation. Willing slaves being the system of our annihilation. These songs are written for us. So we survive another generation. We cannot afford to not know the words. That's the way we like to hear it, isn't it? Oh yeah, kick it off, kick it out, kick it in, kick it under, kick it over, here we go, we're gonna kick it out. Um, if I was uh, elected something or other, and believe me, I should be and ought to be, but that's not the way it always is, um, I would give an inaugural address that would say, it ain't dumb to be free. What you really need is freedom. Freedom! to put lima beans and black-eyed peas together. Freedom to take off B.B. King's watch. Uh, not because you think he keeps better time, but he does, but because if B.B. looks at his watch before he starts playing Lucille, you know he's gonna do a 45-minute set. But if he doesn't look at his watch, it could go all night long. Freedom to take off B.B. King's watch. Freedom to shout, let's hit it on every other beat. Freedom to look at everybody whenever you want with a nod and a tie your shoes. Freedom to not shut up ever. Freedom of pressure points. Freedom of speech. Shifying poetics, tra la 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 freedom of lemonade. Freedom to remember just what you're doing in Montana. Freedom to adjust the height of the floor. Freedom to eat and all poetry diet. And it's pretty caloric too. And it's vegan. And it's, uh, what's that other thing with you? Don't eat the flour. What's that? Thank you. Freedom uh, to not write the poem. Freedom to write the other poem. Freedom to the second guy from the left. Freedom of the F-bomb when appropriate and when inappropriate. Well, let me tell you, they're going to leave that just up to you. Freedom for a march to be omnidirectional and you might not be even be able to move. How many of you all were at the Women's March? The omnidirectional march where you can't even move and you know you're getting someplace too. Freedom to turn off reality and let me tell you it's not on TV buddy. Freedom of Neanderthal. We all are. Freedom of rulers to measure backwards. Freedom of antique road show blowback. Freedom to sneeze with no bless yous. Freedom to scratch somebody else's itch. Freedom to go home again, again. Freedom to land a helicopter in the yard at Angola prison and just see what happens. 
freedom to knit some pink pussy ears on Trump Tower with a mighty roar. Meow. Freedom to love everybody's body simultaneously. Freedom for the freedom riders to finally be able to get off the damn bus. Freedom to shout stop at the top of your lungs at the stock market. Stop! Let's do it. Freedom to take a cell phone to court. Freedom to get back up on the horse knowing you are also the horse. Freedom of omnis animus unum. We're all one animal. Freedom of thoughtless behavior to reanimate itself as a suspension bridge <laughs> leading to a new consciousness that continues to invent itself until everyone crosses over. And there's no tolls either. Thank you very much. One, I am sitting on my red couch, imagining it blood, eyes shot, I have never felt this tired before. Two, the state of Israel is George Zimmerman crying over a knot on his head with a nine millimeter in his hand and a bloody black boy at his feet. Three, I wonder how gasoline feels inside of the body. How quickly a cleansing can turn to a burning, rip us from our space in this earth. But these roots are so bothersome, so thick and maddening. How do they keep growing back these weeds? Four. There is a scarecrow bleeding for miles outside of Damascus. Hay sprouts from his neck like needles blooming. The crows have become weary, have begun to notice the consistency of what they peck once dry and lifeless, now doughy and pulsing, what was once damned is now leaking. The monsters of clay are rising to human again and back, rock bottom, knows us well, loves us unconditionally. Who do I become when I laugh at the blood coating my children? Who are we when we dance as they drop bombs on our heads? You have known humans like us, cursed to lean on a rotten pine slab of wood. You forgot that we are sentient. You fail to remember what gasoline does once inside of the body, something like crack cocaine or white phosphorus. It clears life so that death may join us for tea and how unlucky you are that he's on our side now, five. When I am happy, I am only allowed a moment before the guilt begins to settle. Six, I am so comfortable on this couch of blood and whispers of the dead sing to me from the other dimension or room. I have always been waiting for the door to slam shut on its own. There is something warm in knowing I have an entire village waiting for me on the other side. Something like Southside Palestine, my homes are leaking. 82 people were shot in Chicago in two days. Children are missing pieces of their skull. There is a gaping hole in the face of that young boy, but I am on this fucking couch and I may as well be floating backstroke in the blood. Seven. I am learning to welcome destruction. I think it's a significant part of faith. Believing that from nothing, eternity sprouts, that to begin again is God in action, and I'd rather be the underdog than the supervillain. Maybe I'm just optimistic. 
But Harriet Tubman was a narcoleptic, meaning that during her trek through swamp and strange forest, at any moment she could have fell asleep and collapsed where she stood, how close to God she must have been to lay lifeless on eerie ground, but to have never been captured. Harriet Tubman used to speak to God, and she encouraged her to escape. She didn't want to leave her family, but she knew in order to free them, she had to free herself first. Thank you. A Chicano Speaks, Union Inherited, Union Imagined. I once strolled along a San Fernando Valley street enjoying the way sunlight cuts shadows from buildings and trees on cement. Just then, a pickup truck drove by and an occupant yelled, go back to where you came from. What? I am where I came from. My mother's tribal roots are in the Chihuahua Desert that stretches across northern Mexico and U.S. Southwest. Our ties to this land go back tens of thousands of years. When she had me in El Paso, Texas, from Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, we went from our land to our land. <clears throat> now my brown skin makes me stranger, foreigner, illegal? When did this get turned on its head where the brown-skinned people don't have a place in America anymore? Five minutes from my house is the largest juvenile lockup in the world country. I go there from time to time to speak or read poems to incarcerated youth. At one poetry event, a 14-year-old teen read a rather sweet poem dedicated to his mother and grandmother, both smiling from their seats. A staff member later told me this young man faced 135 years in prison. Not long after the mortgage crisis, homeless encampments popped up across the valley, under freeway underpasses, beneath concrete tunnels deep into alleys. These people became part of our community, even though businesses, police, and homeowners often colluded to push them away. This is the so-called union we inherited, one that harkens back to when natives were slaughtered and pushed off for land, when Africans slaved in the fields that also fed industries, that also filled world markets, or when migrants from Europe or Asia crowded tenements and haulers to labor in mills, factories, mines. It goes back to when U.S. invaded Mexico to obtain more land, oil, and minerals based on an inane idea called Manifest Destiny, laying the ground for empire. I imagine a union where whoever steps on these soils are welcome, like the way Mother Earth accepts anyone, including the broken or lost. I imagine a union where poverty is outlawed instead of the poor, where resources align to needs, schools to everyone's genius, best health care to the sick, and not just to those with money. <clears throat> I imagine a union where if you made mistakes, the consequences become healing, treatment, teachings in a community that recognizes no one should be judged by their worst moments. I imagine a union where spiritual morals and scientific facts are the same, where laws by humans attuned to laws of nature and where everyone is recognized for their particular capacities and gifts. Now we are at odds as a people, everything divided, estranged from nature and our own natures, as well as the regenerative powers to return, give back, provide abundance. To make sure everyone and everything is healthy, intact, connected, no want, no hunger, no jails. That every institution, be it churches, political parties, marriage, production relations, jobs and schools, are up for examination, renewal or reimagination, and change accordingly to the new minds, hearts and technologies of every generation. I don't think there's a perfect union, but I imagine one that is whole, 
encompassing, solid, yet fluid, where we unite around the essential things, have freedom on the non-essential things, and compassion in all things. Is that imagination enough for you? When I think of the State of the Union, I have a hard time being anything but just a huge downer. So in that spirit, uh, this is a poem written on Transgender Day of Remembrance 2016. Anti-Elegy. She was 33 bullet, 35 bullet, 20 bullet, 25 stabbed to death and run over by a car, 66 blade, 22 bullet, 17 fist, 36 blade, 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 bullet, 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 stone found dead in a field, overdose, bullet, unknown, rope, stone, Stone, bullet, oncoming traffic, her own good hands. And it becomes a kind of music, doesn't it? Senseless litany, field of roses, blood red upturned skirts. I open my mouth and hear the pith of me, hear a flock of names, a girl spilling out onto the street. The problem with elegy is that it asks the dead to live. It calls them back. And who am I to say, rise, walk again among those who could not bear the sight of you, your body, your one good dress. Today, someone will walk into the night and then become it. Someone's heart will crowd with beloved ghosts, and who am I to say, dance with me here a little longer, never mind the bloodshed, darling, never mind, never mind. Once, a man said mine, and a woman became an empty room. Once a man said mine, and the ocean split, and the middle passage. Once a man said mine, and there's a genocide. America, how strange to make the world with language, to wield desire as a weapon, and watch the nation burn, then rise up at your feet. Once a girl looked in the mirror and called herself, said, my name is, said, I am, I am, and a man said, mine, mine, mine. I have so many questions. Who are, what does, why, how does it feel to, I'm sorry, I just think I, and define, I'm sorry, your anger, you're afraid of, can fear be, define knife, define fear is, Please forgive me, me. Glad American. The type to actually smile when they see this country's name on the news. The, I don't see color except red, white, and blue. I know every lyric to the anthem, but I don't pay mind to the slave screams as intro, outro, or background noise. That's just not my preference. The type that this whole cul-de-sac gets matching suits. There's no need to wear justice on a sleeve. That's an accessory. That's too unprofessional. That's too dangerous. That's too disruptive. It is a privilege to still be here, to still be hired because your skin is the suit, to still murder and not be dangerous, to still be genocidal and not be explicit, to still wear black, brown, and yellow face as societal foundation. My picket fences get sunburns too and crosses the street from the bad American. I have a secret life you are obsessed with. I have a double consciousness underneath this double life. I've watched your lens colonize mine to believe a savage in me is three-fifths away from walking upright until I no longer see what I am grounded on. They teach me English was here. 
first, indigenous is slang. Click your tongue until each muscle can assimilate to forget how to stretch your family's name in your voice. I am tired of being pictured as a gun when y'all bring tanks into our homes. Our bodies are the only affordable shields we have, with resistance being the only weapon this nation is not immune to. When we are fighting for liberation, we cannot call time out. Sad American, I was born with the star-spangled umbilical cord wrapped around my fate and sleep paralysis each time I attempt for the American dream. When I was young, I wrote love letters embedded in patriotism until you chewed them into bullets and rejected my body with them. I never thought your verbal assault could separate my culture from my body until I found myself as the slaughtered meat for this melting pot along with the rest of nameless ingredients. I can't even put my hands on my heart with pride because it twists remembering my hands, my mother's, her mother's, our generations, our ancestors' hands have been bruised from holding this nation up. I can still see faint traces of you the United States, when I look in a mirror, I am so much more than you, and you are so much more than me, but we can't ignore, we are both afraid of each other, and only one of us will walk away alive. I used to think I was the issue. I was the person whose view tipped a little too wrong until I found you chained to my spine, dangling, afraid to look down, knowing once you were free from this body, you would dissolve into burned books and sustainable life off the skeletons of free people. Your existence was always stolen from mine. And I realize you're completely unstable and none of this is healthy. I don't know if I can love you, America, until you want to and learn to love yourself, dismantle yourself. Thank you. unarmed black Americans were shot and killed by police. 112 transgender people died? Where were you when Trayvon needed someone to come out and stand with him? Mike Brown laid in the street for four hours and you couldn't bring a blanket? Where were you when Eric Garner couldn't breathe? You needed to be told that this was not okay. 53% of the people who voted for President Trump were white women. Now that your livelihood and your health care and your travel plans are in peril, you want something done. You want some resistance. You want to talk to people. You want to do something. You want unity. You want community. You want to work together. You want to sing a song of resistance, of unity and community. You have to be told why we cannot and do not trust your newfound activism. You measure our protests in the dollars that you need to spend to replace panes of broken glass. You let him confess to sexual assault. All the sanctions and all the safety provided by your whiteness and your white males or your money are going to be there for you and you'll just disappear. And we'll still be out here, vulnerable. And we still need to explain to you why that is not okay. More lives will be shattered. More people will die. And we will still have to explain to you why this is not okay. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for the poems you've heard so far. This event was created, imagined, and first implemented by the USDAC, the US Department of Art and Culture. I am happy to introduce to you Adam Horowitz from USDAC. Thank you, Shanaka, and good evening. And hello to everyone watching on the live stream. I'm Adam Horowitz, chief instigator with the U.S. Department of Arts and Culture. And of course, the upshot of not being a government agency right now is that no billionaire secretary can dismantle us. 
We are a people-powered department, a grassroots action network inciting creativity to shape a culture of empathy, equity, and belonging. The USDAC is an act of collective imagination, and by showing up here, you are now implicated in it. Since 2015, we've hosted the People State of the Union, an annual civic ritual rooted in the truth that democracy is a conversation, not a monologue. We invite anyone to host a story circle in their community, bringing neighbors together to share personal stories reflecting on the state of our union and inspiring the poetic address to the nation. This year, from January 27th to February 5th, Hundreds of people gathered in living rooms, community centers, libraries, places of worship, jazz clubs, and schools from North Dakota to Florida, from Maine to Washington, from Des Moines, Iowa to San Juan, Puerto Rico, veterans, mothers, children, elders, artists, immigrants in Oakland, Albuquerque, Richmond, Lawrence, Pittsburgh, Vermilion, and dozens of other towns and cities circled up to share and to listen deeply. More than in previous years, we saw thematic story circles for women and girls in Philly, on reproductive rights with Planned Parenthood in DC, with the formerly homeless in St. Louis, to circles focused on migrant stories in Merced, California, where 20-year-old Socorro shared about her parents who, quote, always drive at exactly the speed limit because they don't want to get deported and leave us. Visit yourself and you'll find that the online story portal is pulsing with moments of belonging and disbelonging of connection across difference, of anxiety and grief, of non-compliance and collective action. You'll find stories of friends and families divided by politics and by border police, stories of hope at airport protests and at Standing Rock. Some stories transcripts end with the word crying in parentheses, and others culminate in heartful exclamation, love is the real sanctuary, concludes Ingrid in Brooklyn. Love is liberation, says Joysha in New Orleans. The words that make it out are a critical part, but much of the magic is in the experience of the story circle itself. After attending one at UC Davis, Larry Bogad wrote, taking equal time to actually listen to each other and reflect, no crosstalk, no interruptions, no elite people hogging the microphone. It was humble, it was real, it was honest, straightforward and so complex. It was a true encuentro. The union is in grave danger, but the people are beautiful. On behalf of the USDAC, thank you to everyone who took part this year offering that rarest of gifts, true presence. In an era of fake news streaming through digital devices, to sit and bear witness to another's lived experience is as rebellious as it is grounding. Sitting in story circles, we take a kind of pledge of allegiance to each other, a pledge to see each other in our complexity, to listen each other into fullness, in allegiance to our common humanity, to belonging without barrier. So you don't have to wait until next year's People State of the Union to get involved with the USDAC. If you haven't already, sign up with the People Powered Department today because we need each other's radical imagination and culture shifting creativity more than ever. Thank you. So from the story circles about which Adam just spoke, we called nine poets to write original sonnets that either drove from the inspiration or the themes of the stories. The poets that wrote are makers, mothers, fathers, singers, Jews, Christians, poets, professors, Kaveh Kahnem fellows, suicide kings, um, and they're gonna be read by some of the folks you've heard so far and some folks that will join us again on stage. So without any further ado, our sonnet readers, please give it up. Give it up for the DJ. Thank you. Uh, my name is Michelle, call me Mush. Um, I am, thanks to my family, I bought all of their tickets. <laughs> it's the only reason why they're here, because I had a, a, a discount code. Um, I'm honored to be able to read the words of another woman and humbled to be given the opportunity to find my story inside of hers. Thank you. Self-portrait. Francesca, I remember. The hardwood kept your shadow long after you were gone. You're staying a type of sister. You star, 
puncturing fog. You ravaged black bluebird on cement. The rain licked raw. I crutched and I clutched your darkness like a candle. Your quicksilver camera lens hangs Jesus girls in the doorway on the sand. Your open legs deliver the horseshoe crab in the puss of your dress. Praise emptiness where a woman's face should be. Each mirror that steals what we expect. I too have shrapnel in the gentle good air. I've been your portrait. One nipple rests while pressed glass blurs the other breast. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. So I'm a big fan of uh, Kevin Koval there in Chicago, you know, uh, great poet and uh, instrumental activist who helped start the Louder Than a Bomb uh, festival and slam event uh, there. That's probably why they asked uh, uh, selected me to read the poem he wrote about white supremacy because I'm just happy to be here to <laughs> let you use giant cranes to lift the great w white male poobahs from our penile thrones <laughs> depositing us in the junk heaps of history, also known as the White House. But Kevin has really said it here, and so here's the words for the death of white supremacy. We've been waiting for that. Uh, so here's the way it sounds in a sonnet form. White men are dying. White men Dinosaurs. Last gasps as the light of history seeps. Blood on their hands, now in their mouth a sore. Panic attacks, white lash, rage before sleep. Cash systems of fascism, power keep. Our hours here. Outside the reach, we fast to shapeshift. Killer bees, Wu-Tang the streets, undefinable and fine as hell. Cast of queer and brown, black and young, all here, facts. Counter culture that confounds the het norm. A storm to rain, rain a new trumpet blast. The people's party, baby fresh, newborn, new cities, no walls, all and all and free. The funeral of white supremacy. Um, I have the honor of reading Emily Kagan Trenchard, who cannot be here. Um, her sonnet is entitled, Invisible Salvation. What is also happening in America? There's a woman who turned off her phone after her newsfeed threatened to eat her and instead laid back to revel in her own joy, to commit to, to an act of defiance, to commit to something more constructive. There are two neighbors who always water each other's plants. 
when the other is away, keeping bits of each other's world alive, because they too cultivated something new and precious in this fertile ground. There is a discolored island of scar tissue on the forearms of a man from El Salvador who ran to grab the Torahs in the synagogue where he worked after a firebomb was thrown through the stained glass windows. And all across America, the sounds of millions of hands wringing themselves is drowning out this secret. But here it is. There are million points of daily beauty which we will never know in an invisible conspiracy of light which will not let us go. Thank you. After she graduated from college, in an effort to avoid returning to the internment camps where her parents were still being held, my grandmother went to teach on a Sioux reservation in South Dakota, where she learned to drive a stick shift and kill and gut a deer. These are three things I do not know how to do, but I also do not know how to leave my parents in prison and travel alone by train across a country that has painted my face a red flag. So perhaps what we learn is a matter of necessity. In her East Coast school, where every class photo was an ocean of blue and green eyes, most people had never even heard of internment camps. Perhaps what we learn is a matter of convenience. She was extra ink on every page she landed. I never asked her what the Sioux children thought of her. Woman with familiar black hair and unfamiliar eyes. Woman alone, unmarried, young, quiet and stubborn and stern. Teacher and stranger and alien and friend. I have already written the poem about how this country is an abusive husband and the poem where this country is a neglectful parent, a burden, a wound, a bad dream, a thief, but they all turn to ash in my mouth. And still, my grandmother stands at the front of a classroom in South Dakota. And still, her brother enlists in the U.S. Army and walks out of the camps. And still, her father sits in a barrack where there is no wood to carve, so he whittles a peach pit into a tiny ring that will one day fit my smallest finger. Perhaps what we learn is a matter of resourcefulness. After the war, when her parents were released, they wrote her that it was time to come home and get married. What we learn is a matter of inheritance. The Sioux mothers gifted her a pair of moccasins for her wedding, beaded and bright, the softest leather for the smallest feet. I am told they were sad to see her go. Later, when her own children go to school, bright black hair and eyes spilling across every class photo, they bring the moccasins for show and tell. They do not bring the hand-sewn curtains. They do not bring the peach pit ring or their grandfather's knife or a deer's heart, red and pumping for one brief moment, still alive in their mother's hands. This is a love poem for the immigration clinic in the Judson Church basement by my good friend Jeff Kagan Trenchard. Say love, love for the posters on the minister's office wall, Dolly Parton in rainbow stencil over all caps, all are welcome. Say love, love for the harm reduction kit framed in the hall, tiny trophy case with rubber bound crack stem and a condom. Say love, love, to the well-worn play kitchen in a spare room, to the kids, now best friends, who did not know each other an hour ago. Say love, love, to the retired librarian translating for me through the gloom, the crack in her voice as she describes the shooting, but stays thorough. Say love, love, to the mother who lived through it, how she points to the spots on her body where her brother was shot. Say love, love to the minister, aching joints of his own deportion order as he, as he ladles soup while it's still hot. 
This November spreads a new pitch of darkness to an already dark night, but this building is well practiced at carrying the needed light. Fuchsia, after Delcy Young, by Angel Nafis. I don't know how you got this number, but please don't call again. What is the difference between a thigh, a slack, a velvet, ease, blooms, seamless, freedom, my Preference, I know not hands build and unbuild me bad. No choose my maker, no pick my soil. I am Negro only in promise. God, glad for my design, blood fleck best the oil. Go shenane, peaches, Wanda, Nicole, rest shoulders. Baste your backs to the bodice. What I give to you, bring back what they stole. Let me, I let soul braid muscle, they prod us. Oh, nobody atones for all the graves, but you so fine. Even all the ghosts wave. Thank you. Everything that love has built, they are undoing, by Yolanda Wisher. Everything that love has built, they are undoing. Democracy, like the Sphinx's nose, they are dismantling. Show me seven new planets so I won't make a fuss when this one goes bad, like Octavia warned us. White men wait in the wild, building borders. Our grandfathers' ashes in their fires, our daughters between their teeth. Even the sky is asking, what is the key to their unmasking? What kind of rabid animal are they carrying in their souls? There'd be more paradise if it weren't for all the holes drilled, the yearning for what they've already destroyed. Though Stevie Wonder still sings overjoyed, this is no castle of love they are erecting, just a fortress of whiteness they're hell-bent on protecting. <laughs> I'm Shelly from Albuquerque, and my biracial boys grew up with the inauguration of a biracial president, and now they live in a rise of racism and hateful public rhetoric. And I am anonymous from Standing Rock. When all these veterans descended, there's something about that image of people coming out of unknown places to offer support. Moments like this remind me that everybody's in the woodwork not coming out. I can get like that too. Just be where I fit. Sometimes you don't have to do a thing. And I am Ingrid from Brooklyn asking, what are some new ways to have conversations with these folks, these young people? They are the ones who are going to be leading this fight now. Is the time for solid, deep conversations. Love is the real sanctuary. And I, I'm anonymous, who left my Oakland bubble for Big Trees State Park and saw these huge signs, Trump, last chance to take back our America. And just thinking in the car about who they mean by our America and the strength and bond that I feel more so than ever with my community about the urgency of these times. It's no longer casual friendship. It's like an emergency situation. That creativity will save us all. Thank you. The 
this is by Luis Rodriguez. Praise to shoes on a homeless winter night. Praise to mothers who nurture without men. Praise to the bottom in a drug mad flight. Praise to the poet who shatters with a pen. Praise to vibrant children in a static world. Praise to dreamers in cash only exchanges. Praise to the tattered flag of justice unfurled. Praise to this nation's death, breath, and ranges. Praise to restoring earth with global warming. Praise to large spirits, even in cages. Praise to new alignments now forming. Praise to anger with eyes, not blind rages. There's much to praise if we are to last. The big within the small, the small within the vast. Thank you. Uh, no Education is something we're all given the same, and that's the problem. The system focuses on equality rather than equity. I don't learn the same as Tammy or Bill. The lack of creativity is always something that I feel. Although they teach us about what's fake and what's real, they never tell us about the brothers in the bill. Never about the pain or what oppression felt like. Not about what the whip or what that belt's like. Never about how people got sprayed down or the emotions that are found in the families who are praying year round for their brothers who now wears a crown. They make us feel inferior. They think that they're superior. Although we're minority, we make up the majority of all of the success stories. Although we're minority, that we make up the majority of all of the success stories. One more time for all the sonnets you heard. One more time for all the sonnets you heard. I love your enthusiasm. I would say right now your enthusiasm at like a seven, seven and a half. It's great. You're doing really great. But like just for shits and giggles, can we get our enthusiasm to a full on 10? Yeah? They say we good. Okay. So those were the sonnets that you heard. I wanted to take one moment and just call out Yolanda Wisher. One of her poems was read inside of that section and she was one of the most diligent orchestrators of this event for the last two years. She wasn't able to be here tonight, but can we just give it up for Yolanda? Cause... I also want to call out the youth fellows that were here and Sarah Kay, who I didn't introduce earlier. We're moving into our last section of the poems. We are gonna hear from Guillermo Gomez Pena, who was a world-renowned social agitator. You give it up for GGP. We're gonna hear again from Michelle Lee, who was a deaf poet and an arts and education trainer at Youth Speaks and beyond. We can give it up individually as we go. I won't come back out. Yeah, that's like a six and a half, you know what I'm saying? We got Marvin K. White, who was a theologian and poet or a theo poet. And he wanted me to tell you he's a Facebook statistician. We are going to hear again from Bo Sia, who's an educator, a sage, and someone who practices generosity. We're going to hear from Tongo Eisen Martin, who's a SF original, a freedom fighter, and an educator. We're going to hear from my poet mentor, Mark Bamuti Joseph, who is an inaugural U.S. Artist Fellow and the Chief of Program and Pedagogy here at Yerba Buena Center for the Arts. And we're going to hear from my good friend Tassiana Willis, who is an Emerging Arts Fellow at Youth Speaks and Beyond. And then I might come out and do a poem as well. Thank you so much. Keep the enthusiasm high, 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 high. Señor Donaldo Trump, when you talk about the people, the true Americans, we wonder, who are you referring to? And therefore, who are you excluding? To the masterminds of paranoid nationalism, I say, we say. We, the other people, we, the migrants, exiles, nomads, and wetbacks in permanent process of voluntary deportation. We, the transient orphans of dying nation states, la otra America, la otra Europa. We, citizens of the outer limits and crevices of Western civilization. We, who have no government, no flag or national 
anthem. We, the new barbarians, in constant flux, from Patagonia to Alaska, from Juarez to Ramallah, we, the seventh generation, the fourth world, the third country, we, millions abound, defying your fraudulent polls and statistics, we continue to talk back and make art. <laughs> to those up there who make dangerous decisions for mankind, I say, we say, we, the homeless, faceless vatos aquellos in the great American metropolis, little Mexico, little Cambodia, little purgatory, we, the West Bank and Gaza Strip of Gringolandia, we, the unemployed and subemployed who work so pinche hard so you don't have to work that much. We, whose taxes send your CEOs and armies on vacation to the South. We, fingerprinted, imprisoned under surveillance. We, within your system, without your mercy. We, without health or car insurance, without bank accounts or credit cards. We, scared shitless, at ground level, but only at ground level, like a pack of hungry wolves exploring the ruins of an empty mall. We continue to be together. To the shareholders of monoculture, I say, we say, we Americans with foreign accents and purple tongues, we bilingual, polylingual, conilingual, we lost and found in the translation, we interracial lovers, children of interracial lovers ad infinitum, we Americans in the largest sense of the term, in cahoots with the original Americans who speak hundreds of beautiful languages incomprehensible to you. We, in cahoots with millions of displaced Latinos, Arabs, Blacks, and Asians who live so far away from their land, we, trapped, trapped between ice and organized crime, Magister Dixit, the people you call illegal aliens are the original inhabitants of this continent. To the masters and apologists of war, I say, we say, we matriots, not patriots. We rebels, not mercenaries like you. We labeled extremists for merely disagreeing with you. We caught in the crossfire between Christian fear and Muslim rage. We reject your arms sales and oil deals. We distrust your orange alert and your white privilege. We oppose the Patriot Act patrioticamente hablando, the largest surveillance system ever, the biggest prison complex to date. We did not vote for you. Do not support your wars. Do not believe in your violent gods. Do not respect your immigration laws. Standing scared but firm, we demand your total, total withdrawal from our minds and bodies, ipso facto. After a long dream, after a long, long dream called Western democracy, we, all of us across borders, meridians, and continents are finally awake and hitting the streets as we speak. Mikaje Kidnamaya, 
no mohiki ni meheka ila meheki anda haya me okomoyo no hoke na maha mi mohi ne heke yama e mehe ni omohoko ya thank you A little bit louder for Brother Guillermo. One more time. So I'm back. Hey. Hey to everyone out there live streaming us. Okay, so I'm going to get into it. Um, I just want to say something very quickly. Usually I'll start with like a song or like a quote, but tonight in writing this piece, I thought about the importance and the privilege it is for any of us artists and poets to have this particular platform, yeah? And I think in reflecting on true democracy, I really do believe that it's a conversation that's had um, and that's shaped with the hands of many. So tonight, I offer you this piece. Um, you can come to my Facebook page and show me love, but more importantly, it's an invitation for you to push and challenge my own thinking. Yes? Yes? Thank you uh, so much for being here and for taking in my words. A poetic address to this country's founding fathers. Uh, dear founding fathers, um, a South African writer, Anchi Kroger, described meeting a nomadic desert poet in Senegal. <clears throat> He shared with her the role of the poet in his culture and the job, he said, is to remember where the water holes are because the survival of an entire group depends on a few water holes scattered across the land, yeah? And when the people forget, it's the poet's job to remind them, yes? Okay, cool. In my life, I've used poetry to preserve the water of my story in this American desert. My grandmother, anybody here from the TL? Okay, shout out to the TL. My grandmother didn't buy Tums and alka seltzer when I had a stomach ache. My harmony gave me acupuncture with a sewing needle in the living room of her tenderloin apartment. We didn't buy hamburgers or french fries. We ate lotus root and rice. Let me be clear of the privilege that I stand in. I am a child of voluntary immigrants, yes? Born inside cold waters of Korean War, pinned to the undertow of my grandmother's generation's version of hashtag no Muslim ban. Like the students I've served, I too know what it feels like to be stuck between the hyphen that says culturally we are here and not. Your America was built of empires of imagination. It starts in 1492 and calls itself the beginning. History textbooks have been fashioned by alternative facts. The young people of this country are taught to revere the number 13 and know verbatim the proclamation of 1762. Your brethren have preserved a financial system that you architected, but are blinded to the spiritual debt accrued from their culture of conquest. All the gods in your prophet story are named George. George. There's no mention of mothers or rivers of milk. No truth about Pope Alexander's doctrine of discovery or Edward's city on the hill. No critique of settlement colonialism, just a lot of white mythology. Yes, you wrote your asses off on the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I'll give you that because I read it last week. I was like, I at least better know my stuff if I'm going to go and talk about it. So I read it and it's good. It's all right. <laughs> but what about those letters that your wife burned that would have exposed the white bone of adultery? Someday, a girl named Lucille, a descendant of African slaves born inside one of the original 13 colonies, will pen a five-line story that will change the course of my life. She'll say, they asked me to remember, but they want me to remember their memories. And all the while, I keep on remembering mine. And then... A descendant of indigenous Aztecs will speak into life the strength of curanderismo and her ancestors' oral tradition. She'll tell herself, divided country girl, it is okay to not know the specifics of your ancestors. 
the Western world would have us believe that only what is written is true. But we never really lose our ancestors. Do you feel them in the room with you now? Heavy is the hyphen that bridges all that is human in heaven, self and other. Heavy is the hyphen that bridges all that is heaven and human, self and other. I'm a poet, and it's my duty to remember, yes? So check it. My America is a brick that dreams of becoming a waterfall. My America is a handwritten letter ascended out of the dead letter room on the third day to tell you that grief is love souvenir. My America is difficult on the tongue, is Atslan. Is Denizen Kane's tree city, and any day now you're gonna find him on the corner of typical cats, and I was born with two tongues. My America is long term, full paid, paid leave for every parent. My America is mental health centers with lightly scented candles and warm hot chocolate and soft recliners because I've been there. <laughs> Some of those places are not nice. My America is an all expenses annual paid vacation for all blended families, because Lord knows it's tough for some of us. My America is a grand story of lovers, and if this is so, let my America be the arms of my love, and us learning what it takes to stay long after the rice hits the carpet, yes? Y'all get that? I'm gonna say it again. Anybody here married? Like, more than 10 years married? All right, cool. My America is a grand story of lovers, so if this is so, then let my America be the arms of my love and us learning what it takes to stay after the rice hits the carpet. When we add ourselves to the thread of the collected, baby, we are forever connected, is what he said to me. When our son is older, I will hold up his face to this beat-up place and tell him about survival. I'll tell honey... Yes, baby. Our people have been made ghosts before our time, but we still sing and declaim and have a happiness particular to all that is our own. When he wonders, oh ma, why are the men in blue so mean? Why are they so slow to show, but so fast to pull when we need them most? I'm gonna tell him love. Seeds don't always choose their home, they are sown. And the loveliest thing I've ever seen was your father pruning a persimmon tree. He turned around and looked at me and said, we've got to teach it to grow. Thank you. Let us poet and pray. In this new beginning, God, create the new heaven and the new earth. We know that and is a conjunction, so God be the conjunctive. God be the and, God join us, God be our connectivity, God take us jointly or God do not take us at all. Finish this sentence, God. The earth is without form and void, and darkness is upon the face of the deep. Spirit of God, move upon the face of these waters from Ferguson to San Francisco. God, be about that fluidity and that viscosity. Be the thickness and the stickiness, God. God, say it, let there be light. And then God, do it. God, be the first light bulb going off. Be incandescent. Be the first sun of our sealed tombs. And the first inspiration come like morning glory. And hour 47 of our 48-hour PG&E notice. God, be the first line of poetry. God, see the light. It is good. Now, God, divide the light from the darkness. God, the first line break. God, the first breath of poesis. And God, call the light today, and the darkness call it tonight. And this evening and this morning will not be our latter days, but our first day. God be the first stanza. Creation now, God. Make sense of it all now. God, your only response to formlessness can be poetry.
God edit us. God is our first free right. Is God spitting bars? Is God the stream of consciousness? Is God the open mic? Is God the spoken? Is God the itinerant? Is God speaking in the vernacular? Is God the visionary artist? Is God the folk artist? Is God the willy nilly filling all of this space like the blank piece of paper we leave here to face? And we pray that poetry will always be our God response to hopelessness. Poetry will always be our God response to state violence, to inequalities and inequities, to poverty and to homelessness, to inadequacies of health care and glass ceilings for women and people of color. Speak revolutionary poetry and mean it, God. Speak poetry that saves lives and mean it, God. Make our poetry and our stories and our remithing the appropriate response to why are they killing us? The only answer to our children when they ask, will they mistake my Skittles for a weapon, mama? The only way to break down metaphorically and to transform their hate into energy. Why are they kicking us out of our home? Why is there no medicine for my condition? Why is there no food on my table? Why can't I work if I want to work? And God, today, from Birmingham to Berkeley, let there be a radical firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. God, the water cycle. God, the stones thrown smooth. God, the rock and the hard place. Reshape the theologies and the geologies of the earth, God. Jericho, God, tear down the walls of poetry, God. We are made from evocation and to be evocative. We are made from invocation and to be invocative. The poetry in us is the God in us. Today, God, we are making sense in the meaning of it all. We are the revision and the new word count. We are the spell checked and beloved today, even in, no, because we are in this state, God becomes and makes us the free verse. We invite it to be poets, to be the long hand of God striking the rock in order that all of the holy writ flows into the world. Let all of YBCA say amen. amen. Now on this day, just now, sorry, not sorry, sermon, not sermon. If you pay taxes, speeding tickets and tolls, bank, go to school, teach, vaccinate, vote, file in corporation papers, or know your social security number by heart, you work for the state. And if we are all on the dole, activists, artists, and academic, clergy and lay, blue and white collar, rich and poor, physician and patient, retiree and intern, teacher and student, we must leverage this knowing and this biology to change the system. We must make it nervous. We are not as they have told us and sold us on the outside of the system. We are the nucleus of this here cell. We push from the inside out. The state, the rogue mutation is the cancer is on the outside and has attached itself to our health and is threatening us with a slow and a quick death. It is making us sick and prescribing us medicine both. It is pushing back from the outside. It is not interested in our wellness, but in managing our health and our care. This day, just now, sorry, not sorry, sermon, not sermon. Imagine all of us at the same at the same agreed upon time, maybe when the ancestors whisper mitosis or meiosis, we split and divide and grow and begin to reproduce and give life and birth to something outside of the medicine machine, outside of the war machine, outside of the education machine, outside of the vote counting machine, outside of the check gender boxes and outside of the parade permits. Today, my beloved, I am here to tell you that we are not mere wards of the state. We live before law and order. We must think and pray and poet and remember our unregulated breaths in our bodies before BMIs.
We must go back to creation, remember the circumstances of our births into humanity. We must liberate our meter and our rhyme by knowing what our ancestors knew, that there was a time when the stars and the planets and the waters and the mountains and the trees and the fruit were all wild and out and looked at us not as interlopers, but as co-creation. We must know that extraction from any system that seeks to control us is is worth it and our thirst for liberation is natural we must know that staying alive and coming home are the only employee benefits when your job is being black and you work for the state farm for capitalism for white supremacy and for patriarchy I quit. The state of black union, of black wholeness, of black remembrance, of black holding it together, of black fascia, means that the blackness has to be freelance. Blackness has to stop being the minor and the mine. We are self-employed, fully capable of generating in material, metaphysical, and intellectual economies, wealth, abundance, and love. Love enough that we will need to hire spiritual accountants and estate planners to help us decide who we want to leave our love to and how we want to divide our love up among our families when we leave this place. Blackness must mean we work from home and we work for home. Let all of YBCA say amen, a poem, ashe, and honey boom. Thank you. Up, monitor. <clears throat> a poem for Bo Sia to strengthen him in his transformative work today. Let go of every role you've ever been assigned. Let go of this system of fear you've learned serves no one. Let go of all the walls that have been conditioned into you. Let yourself extend the metaphor beyond the flat tax of language, the Western romance with words, the oppressor's love of making the line absolute. Nurture the metaphor with the potency of imagination beyond the imagining you've wasted on better presentation to deny all you're afraid to face. Build the metaphor until it expands possibility beyond the boxed definitions that disconnect us all. Allow the universe, though it will cost you all you've achieved in this system of lack. Allow the universe! Regardless insecurities demand for your focus. Allow the universe! Rise to the occasion of yourself. For too long you must understand this. Though you will die before this work's completion, you must claim it like yourself. Begin the process of developing a system based on human design. For you have never been a poet. For too long you let the world dictate your choice with each title that reduced you. Own your calling. Though those who live bound to fear will never make a place for you. May it unfold into the blooming that earns the gift of life you are responsible for. May it lead to a system that will not extinct us. May it become the way your will. 
reflects universe for all who survive long after you've passed on. Thank you. Guided by teeth goes the country. There's a cow's mouth on the flag. A peculiar notepad holds street life dear, but the writer's not here. He's somewhere talking to tombstones about the good old days or splashing reborn water on his latest face or wondering how his old gun is doing in the afterlife, wondering how much death trap is in those gas station aisles. There gotta be a million dollars a day on this concrete island. New engine in the moon why it never goes down. I mean 72 straight hours of night, at least according to everyone's posture around here. 8.30 in the morning is really 30 minutes to closing. You know, the city shuts down for a sleepy rat race. Elevators shoe shuffle to the nearest heaven, laughing with rats the whole way up. There's scabs everywhere. In puddles of city, in concentrated schools, in TV-lit warm rooms, the light reveals military fatigue when it hits just right on the ties that are wrapped around the necks of lazy white guys. Empire is too easy, baby. Chant at the walls all summer if you feel like it. Best way for a target to move is shooting back. Running for a tree line made of freeways. Wisdom says against a war machine on Tuesday, you stand no chance. But may we be the last poor men to play it safe. Cow's mouth on the flag. A politician raises his hand, and the crowd shows their teeth. An oligarch raises his hand, little girls are not safe outside. You are all high, depressed, and comrades in function. 15 minutes to closing, and the city survived another black rebellion. Stay down. We just paying dues by trash fires, not just anybody can set. Don't you love how deadly things whisper in the moment and men kill like feathers fall while everybody's screaming inside? The writer knows that death is not a matter of dignity, rather humor. In a house that smells like roach races, nuclear percentages on torn stoves, I mean here life never was. Just lazy matches and manic inhumanity, hands rushing away from life towards stoves. What are we doing here? Surviving for no reason in particular, because nobody's gone far today. Nobody will go far tomorrow. Trust me, hell and heaven cannot count. Strange gardens where secondhand clothes play and concrete wishes to be human so that it could be a cannibal where they find you drenched and drains wish to be human so that they could be worthy arms for you to die in. Greet them all, grandson. Prepare for the day when every child is calm and don't say we ghosts didn't write you a poem. Don't say we didn't dig your life. Remember the shotgun by the coat rack that everybody in the house knows how to use. Remember the tightrope made of needles for walking in between driveways and man-made best friends. Go ahead, grandson. Tune this street again. Never mind this country kills musicians first. Broken neck night, scarred neck life. If these walls could write lyrics, they say, what's your ankle, angel eyes? 30 to 50 rounds pass by on a street with no daughters. This street has no sons. Just young prisoners of war in a racist city that means to make capital. And we know so much. We know it all. We were stood against walls. Who's on the third cross around here? Cow's mouth salivating over the street. And that is the story of why we aim at teeth. <laughs> I love that dude right there. Uh, the first, the first 100 days after your heart has been snapped. No. 
the first hundred days after you spend three straight days crying, after your heart's been snapped. You're out of tears, but you still feel their echo in your body. You're vulnerable, you're out of touch with order and just hella angry. This president gives me a just got my heart snap feeling. And apparently he's doing the same thing to like everybody around me, like everybody, which makes the whole world feel kind of zombie-ish. Uh, between the visas, the wall, the healthcare repeal, the Goldman Sachs cabinet, the fictional massacres, the actual alliances with Nazis and fascists, the Muslim ban, Flynn, Sessions, DeVos, Dodd-Frank, the Yemen attack, Kellyanne, Fax, Soul, Toll, Bowling Green in Sweden, abandoning freedom of the press and banning tiny orange hands on the button, a glutton, a constitution gutton, social safety net cutton, Kaiser, Heil, Herr Drumpf, Scalia, thinker like justice nominating, self-hating, pedophilic rapist, climate science debating, ruling via tweets. You can't tweet at North Korea, dog. <sighs> Has it been a hundred days yet? <sighs> this is emotionally unsustainable. And um, because all the therapists that I trust are traumatized too, <laughs> Uh, I am seeking balance by turning off the news and listening instead to the corpses begin to speak. I'm finding refuge in the vigilance of resistance dreams resurrecting themselves. Black Jesus didn't walk on water for me to whine. Hell, black Jesus come down the steps to meet his betrayer at the door as would the restless dead. I can't plug into the interweb. I'm tuned in to the ghosts in my head instead and maybe that makes me crazy but this thing we got here is supposed to be normal this punishment society based on a logic of exclusion a crisis of knowledge run by a narcissist prone to delusion if he's saying, well, Barack Hussein, call me crazy, but I'm going to be right here in this corner, 100 days and running, rhyming spook riddles to myself, preserving mental health by clinging to the talking spirits, summon the perfect imprint of the genetic memories of the best of us, birth a nation of black thought, listen in to the ringing silence of four little girls who were bombed where they prayed, like the Charleston Nine or the savage in Quebec who killed six and injured eight, to the non-believers in the conversation. Congregation, you be careful the wrath of this president's buried corpses. They join the choir of this country's multicolored trample. I'd advise you to stay sane by thumping the thunderous paranormal bass, booming like the music of Jordan Davis before a racist shot him in the face. I listen to the melody of the after death memory of that young boy. I won't be dizzy in this alt reality. Be steady. I am steadied by the genetic memory. I am a child of the sugar cane sharpen like a spear to break my ancestors chains take 100 days Look into a fire and remember Egypt. Walk home in the rain and remember Trayvon. When the train goes underground, think of Tubman. Bring my hands up to Alleluia like Mike Brown. Black out in a purple haze on top of red clay. Invoke the infinite like the color of my true love's hair. Be true. Be love. What, I'm supposed to forget my capacity to conjure the world? What, I'm just supposed to give up the ghost? This dude is a cyst, but the disease is buried blue vein, red blood, white supremacist skin deep, oil dollars over rainforest green, buried like the voices in a New Orleans mortuary. Sometimes it takes a little longer than expected, but I'm putting myself on a fast 100 days of ghost listening. They've healed me before when my heart was snapped and they gave me the strength I needed to sanely, humanely clap the fuck back. <laughs>
country tears of thee supremacy oh of thee I sing my country is a song about itself stuck in off key lodged without lyric on the tip of its tongue my country is a promise trying to choke up a throat to be sung alive my country hums aloud a love drunk teenager deciding if it should birth itself labor america out already or do away with the damn thing my country rocks itself to sleep awake head nodding disagreement a ragtime a polka a ring stomp a creek shout dirge march you know a sad song my country an anthem sidelined and kneeling a ballad of lost battles and bombs exploded my country a base staff under a troubled man you country a stain a hook a strain i have been taught to make in my head and hush if i belt you out could you live for me oh america america god sheds his teeth on the red clay amber field under nails lie and fertilizer cow pie corn husk paper mill sawdust sunrise soy meal america from which my parents sprang i sing of thee every storied circle a union i address in tune in time of interrupted verses i medley your warbling hues I sing undocumented Guatemalans, descended of wealth, turning burgers for Jack, chased about the parking lot on their brakes, told to keep their heads down and just speak English. I sing for Trill, for Shell, who calls her boys biracial until they are afraid and then they black, for a mother who considers the darkening in the coming days. I chant of cultural Jews in Brooklyn who look at museum pictures of Berlin and demand down to their own hands, how do we make never again? I dirge for Faith Emmanuel, sing the ghosts of the deacons, begging Jesus, take me with you. This cannot sustain this choir interrupted. Jesus, 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 take me with you. I cry. A cracked throat parched by chance, part of a mass, chance encounter with jazz. I sing America, a vinyl made groove, glitch skipping backwards onto itself, the same old blues like Michael in Phoenix, stripping a hate flag from a flatbed and being suspended from high school instead of the racism. Like Toure, who was never Alex and never told, though the police accosted him as such, his homework inspected at gunpoint, or the cable man who needed a reminder that immigrants are also blonde and right here with you, and to extract them from America is to remove the baseline is to break its neck and hang its head for the dominican girl in philly whose mama won't let her go back into hair cuttery until they get some act right and learn to snip a curl or two i sing for you and my mama who drug me out of supercuts in berkeley let's just say america is the mm -hmm between us learning our own curves and tresses right. and excising only right. what must be trimmed i sing All of you right. i sing for lynn right. and gwen who toll house their way into their All neighborhood right. for cookie All who was right. feeding her cat in florida and calling excitedly for her partner sue for ryan who felt white and othered and never quite in for cis pan sex poly cherokee phds america is yours to assume or repossess i sing this song to remind you jacksonville philly albuquerque bainbridge and st louis garfield commons and nino wisconsin Standing Rock, the district, I sing Beulah, Island, Bethesda, Gainesville, Evanston, Plymouth, Orlando, Plantation, Hope, I sing Hope. Yeah, lift every voice and sing, yeah, until earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. I sing small town, my block, cell block, res, trailer park, concrete, high rise, tent city, camp out, picket line. I sing of your home, America, the one you abandoned into everything else to build the one you gained from your dog tooth fight my country is your psalm kept under breath wept as rhythm placing railroad ties you crooned the unlawful love songs the getaway cries the take me out the am dial so i sing for you the tired poor huddled stark raving or free i sing the v you are daring yourself to be the country you would become if you were mine my country if you were mine my country my country See you here. My shoes came 
C'est oui We were alone And I was singing this song to you Decibels is playing nothing but a gangster party because we are a party unto ourselves. Gangsters, activists, poets, leaders, you, the people, have been charged with 17 poems over the last hour and a half to do your good work. This is not a finished moment. This is your call to action. We are joined by partners out in the lobby who can help you bring your dreams of freedom, of America, of justice, of hope, of blackness to life. Right? So give it up for yourselves one time and the work that you're about to do. <laughs> to my Facebook Live audience, I'm talking to you as well. Just because you're not here doesn't mean we don't celebrate you, thank you, and encourage you to do your good work as well. Thank you for being with us on our Facebook Live and our live stream. Thank you to the ASL interpreters. You. We love and appreciate you. Thank you, DJ Dion Decibels. Thank you, amazing USDAC collaborative team, as well as the YBCA team. We could do nothing without you. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Sarah. I want to give big, big props to the whole CE team here at YBCA under the direction of John Moscone. Nobody like him in the whole world. And last but not least, I want you to one more time give it up for yourselves. I came about my shoes for y'all, just a little more, just a little more. I'm so happy to be with you one more time because nothing can be done without you, the people. Thank you.